Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiullah, atiyah Rasulullah, alhamdulillah, minkum. And always a reminder for myself and I'm the Qur'an, Jisun Da'eef, a miskeen, a zalim, a jahal. But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah, the holy month, Jumad al-Awwal and the birth of Sayyidina Zainab blessing this month and inshaAllah dressing us from its immense lights and its immense realities inshaAllah. InshaAllah always a reminder for myself that to be dressed in these blessed nights and the dress of Holy Qur'an to dress us and bring us into the heart from which it emanates. And this is the month of Sakhar Lahumma fi samawati wa ma fil ard that Allah describes in Surah Jathiya, the 45th Surah of Holy Qur'an is the surah that dresses this holy month that we have subjected to you whatever is in the heavens and whatever on earth and whatever in between them. So that nobody can leave out, oh not this, not that. Means Allah in this month's journey into that Divinely fire and Divinely light into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah is clarifying as a reminder that everything has been subjected to you. Whatever is of the material world of the mulk, whatever is from malakut, anything in between them that whatever can be thought of, Allah has subjected all of that to the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad And the proclamation and the Divine reality of that begins to open more and more of that reality of understanding of Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah and the immensity, the immensity of that blessing. And always a reminder that to reach these blessings last month's tajalli was to control the fire in our lives and that everybody has a fire. And whether that fire is going to become the fire of muhabbat and ishq or it becomes the fire of anger and qadab. So then every fire that hits us in life it's the training that determines what type of reaction we're going to have. If we become angered by whatever people's actions are then we're going towards the realities of ghadab and anger and fire or whatever fire comes to us through our training and through our practices to remain silent. And when we take a path of silence and do our tafakkur, do our contemplation, do all of these practices that fire is not a flame that comes out towards humanity. But it becomes an inner flame of ishq and muhabbat and that's why the sad tone on all of the nasheeds, the knots, they all have a sadness to them. Because this love story is of a melancholy sad tone because the believer in dunya is burning. That is not taking his right and fighting everybody, arguing with people, screaming at people. But the one whom has training is bringing that fire and bringing it into their heart so that it becomes a fire of ishq and muhabbat, Divinely love and Divinely grace. And Allah is testing the servant, if they're not able to bring that fire in and it comes out then the test has not been achieved, the reality has not been achieved for that month. So means that fire of ishq and muhabbat that was from Taseen to Suratul Yaseen is the fire that we talked about. So that when we talk about these realities these are not philosophies, these are as soon as they talk about them means Allah is giving a warning. If we, if we view how tariqah works, Rabbi al-A'la has called us here tonight, He knows what He's about to send to the ones speaking and to the people whom are listening. 
he knows oh, I'm about to send something, warn them. That's how talks are, the shaykhs is not bringing something, he's, 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 there's nobody. If we become nobody enough, we become like a radio for them and this radio is filled with warnings. Rabbil A'la, the one whom I'm going to now send them fires. I'm going to burn outside but I'm going to burn them with every type of difficulty and mushkilat. So fires that anything that comes to agitate and sun, they have to use their practices. They're like firemen, they've been trained that they keep their wudu, they keep their practices, they keep their understanding that my path is a path of humiliation and not pride and arrogance. My path is to be like the dog of Ashab al-Kaf that as much as they throw rocks at me, I'm remaining humble not to take my right from people with my tongue. Because it's not your right to take. Allah warned that I'm going to test them. So they've surrendered their right to Allah and they remained in a path of silence. Doesn't mean they're happy with what people say and do and insult or, or agitate and aggravate them, they're not supposed to be happy with it but they're not supposed to be reacting to it. As soon as they react to it, it, it hit them, they became a part of the fire. The key to its success is that they kept their wudu, they have their ta'weez and they are anticipating. Allah going to send an aggravation. When that aggravation comes then they internalize it and they control it and they turn it over in their sujood to Allah and then their, their heart becomes heavy and sad and if it's insult, if it's this or if it's that, whatever it is. It becomes something beautiful between the servant and Allah Ya Rabbi it's heavy, Ya Rabbi it's difficult, this is heavy for me. And it just gets more and more, if we don't understand that it doesn't go away. It's not like in school that you can miss the math test and maybe you just get by with something else. The test just keeps coming back until that test is passed. That's why the tariqah can be, you, know, you can be there 20 years, you could have met all of the shaykhs and sitting there for 30 years and got nowhere. Because that it's not a time like a jail where we have to do a time and after 10 years you have parole, you get out. It's a matter of passing the tests that come. That's what's important that in our lives is to write that, that sign that I want to reach to this Divine the fire and I want to pass its reality. I want to achieve something that as much as thrown at me, I remain patient and calm. I turn my affairs over to Allah and I develop that ishq and love. And that's when we describe that the broken hearted are with Sayyidina Muhammad because they find the coolness and tranquility in that relationship. That every time people insult them, every time people ridicule them, people now emailing, oh you know this guy who says his face is on the moon, he's attacking you shaykh, he's attacking you shaykh, go say something. Is anyone crazy enough to say their face is on the moon? Why I have to open my mouth? Allah is the one whom defends me. If I open my mouth to that person it's an advertising for them, that's a dajjal. Anyone who thinks he saved the Mahdi Salaam, he's dajjal. Run from him, throw something at him and run. So why, 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 why you have to defend yourself? After a while you find this life is very amusing because people just say <laughs> things left and right, saying insults left and right and say, Alhamdulillah, this is what Allah wanted, Allah wrote that, Allah decreed that and Allah wants to see if we're going to be patient, cool and calm. So that we can take our hisab, take our, our reward from Allah and then they become ashiqeen. If they don't then they become the people of ghadab and anger and retribution. And the danger is that if you use your position to retribute and to come against people and that's extremely dangerous. You use what Allah has given to you not as a podium for teaching 
but as a podium for retribution and that is a big danger. And you see that by untrained people, if Allah gave them a microphone they'll use the microphone and begin to attack and hit everybody because they think that that's now the podium for them to get a retribution. But in our training we never use that podium to attack anyone, to come against anyone because it's only for the muhabbat love and the teaching of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Anything of a personal has nothing to do with that podium and that position. So it means these are all the trainings, these are all the, the realities of, of tariqah to achieve these goals that the shaykhs are teaching. Otherwise we just keep teaching, teaching, teaching but people being lost into the oceans of anger and then the teaching becomes only like a philosophy class. Maybe he meant like this, maybe he meant like that, no, no, is Rabbil Allah is calling us as a warning that this shaykh is going to tell you what's coming now onto earth and you're going to be going through what's coming onto earth and that's why we, we're at the same location. The one speaking is also hearing, I'm hearing from myself, the difficulties are coming, fires are coming, you know, qadab and anger are coming, people are, are… they want something, they don't want to patiently earn it, they want to go out, break windows and grab it, they want to take people that they don't have, that are not from them, they want to take cars that are not theirs, they want to take purses and clothes and things, so everyone is angry. If we put ourselves within that same category then we are no different than these people on the street. And Allah is warning that this great anger will come and engulf the world with a fire. This is the fire of bad character, the fire of violence in which Allah says, I will punish them at the hands of men who have no mercy. Means they come for like the sangipa, the, the cleaning time. We described that how many ten years ago that the lava rock that you take the dead skin off your feet, this will be like a hammam for everybody. Everybody will have this rock and they be scrubbing each other and taking away uh, the skins and, and the, the character of people. Allah be washing them before He washes them in the grave. So of immense urgency is to have this character that this testing comes, be patient, be calm, control your, your, your orifice, your mouth, your hands, control everything that's at your disposal and use your sajada, your prayer carpet and go to sujood and cry that Allah take any type of anger and bad character away. So that we can achieve these realities and, and this immense ocean of muhabbat. That the love for Sayyidina Muhammad is such an immense goal that you know what makes the sahabi kiram when we say the, the honoured companions, what make them to be kiram and honoured and what makes their maqam so high that you can't even achieve it, there's not a wali that can achieve their stations, why? Because they served Allah? No, uh, many people can serve Allah but because they served Sayyidina Muhammad And their name Sahab means that they were companions to the most beloved creation of Allah and a result of that companionship and that service they achieve the station that nothing in creation can achieve. So it means we have a goal, we have a goal is to achieve this immense love and immense reality. And we can't be from that reality then we can serve those whom are serving, whom served, whom served, whom served and through their love they are connected to this ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad and to relieve themselves of these bad characteristics because they gain the characteristic from where? From the dunya that they occupy. You gain these characteristics from dunya that when you go out and you interact and mingle with people, deal with people, you're picking up their characteristics. You pick up the energies of these people, 
Means that's why then all of the training was so important that you go home, you wash, you clean, you wash away that dunya off yourself, you meditate that, Ya Rabbi let whatever was trying to attach itself to me that in the sama, I see myself like in a sama in the shower whirling and that my soul is washing away these difficulties and these bad characteristics so that I don't bring them into my being and then day by day they become stronger and stronger and then the bad character of people overtake me and I become one with the character of those people. So means these are, these are the days of difficulty in which all these trainings are, are, are not like philosophy but we're going to have to live and die by them. That you've got to have your taweezes, you have to have everything with your taweezes marked, you have to understand your, your tafakkur, have to understand your wudu, have to understand that when you go home wash, decontaminate like you've been into a nuclear facility. You watch those sci-fi movies where they were contaminated and they go through a special shower and then they can go back out to civilization so that they don't contaminate everybody outside. Our lives are like that now, the outside world is contaminating us. We actually have to shower and decontaminate to go back into the safety of our homes and into our prayer areas. And now they have smash and grabs in all different cities, they're breaking things, they're robbing people at, at the, their car. Means that the, the lens of anger and qada is going to go out of control. And we pray that Allah grant us this ishq and love and that's why we give charity, that's why we wash, that's why we have taweez, that's why we do all our practices. Zaki and zakat is to purify, it takes away qadab, it takes away anger, it takes away all these bad characteristics, all of these tools are in this one association so that you don't have to go outside for anything. They have within this tariqah a way to be of service, a way to support, a way to propagate and teach and spread the teaching to other people. All of it is self-contained. That's why we don't represent only one arm of the teaching, we, um, we, um, we represent the entire embodiment of the teaching. You come, you sit, you learn, there's a book for you, there's a website for you, there's an app for you, there are links that you should be propagating, there's a charity in which you can serve. We said before that people come and think that this charity is about sending people money. So many people now they don't, I don't know how we got on a Uganda spam list but 10,000 email coming in, send us money, send us money It said, no there's no sending anyone money, it's not about that at all. It's about us having students on the ground and actually participating in these programs, one for their self-development and that to embody the teachings that they go out and they feed the poor. And as a result of their efforts and their work they identify, Shaykh there's another place we can go to feed and then we'll go there, we'll go there. So that our people are feeding people exactly like the teaching of Prophet wherever they are. That's what's important, not just send people checks, everybody can send checks but our students have to be there to give the food, to have the benefit of that activity and interaction with these people who are in need and who are in difficulty. So it means that it's all encompassed, there's nothing of all this teaching that not in this association and in these programs and all of it designed for the perfection of the student. So if they come and they learn, they read, they get the books, they propagate the links, they support the charity, they get the goods, everything is all encompassed in their program and they should find themselves to be successful. Because you're listening to the realities, you're doing the realities and as a result you'll be dressed by the realities. So alhamdulillah it's all there. Allah has made it that way, Prophet has, has granted its ability and awliyaullah have supported it. It's a means in which for us to perfect ourselves, especially as the days become more and more dark, more and more difficult and more and more confusing. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, as al-mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.